What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Draw Along Show. First of this week, there are two every week, Wednesday and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, and I'm glad you're all here to draw with me. Now, if you're watching over on YouTube or if you are watching on Twitter, remember, I am going to be reading the live chat over at behance.net slash live. That's B-E dot net slash live for short, okay? So head on over there if you want to ask me some questions or make some suggestions for what I should draw or just hang out and chat with all the nice folks who are watching this show. Speaking of which, we have Jamel here and Christelle. How about that? A little bit of rhyming action for you. What's up, Aaron? Nice to see you, Sam and RB. Good to see you as well. Hi, Biola. Glad you could join us. And uh, Timothy is here as well. Folks are just uh, coming into the show as we kick off this introduction. Now, hope you're all safe and sound out there. Remember to get vaccinated. Remember to wear masks, okay? We don't want things creeping back up. Numbers are getting a little scary. If you start getting stressed, you know what to do. Draw. Drawing is a meditative activity. It can keep you chill, can keep you relaxed, and that is a good thing, all right? So snag a little piece of paper. And you're going to need something to draw with. Could be a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon. Or if you want, you could get uh, off the shelf that old uh, horn that you took from the carcass of a uh, an ox, you know. And you're going to dip that ox horn in a little bit of barbecue sauce. And then you can draw all over the kitchen wall with it, okay? Listen, you use what you got to use. Whatever your medium of choice is, it's your medium of choice. And I'm not going to judge, okay? Um, hey, speaking of horns, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Why is it so hard to have a good conversation with a goat? Well, you know, they always just butt in. Okay. Why don't we get some drawing? After all, this is not the comedy half hour. This is the drawing half hour, right? Draw a long show. Now... Um, hope you're all set, ready to go to do these drawings. If you've been with me before, you know you have to be able to do three simple things. They are a straight line, okay? See that? Could be short, could be long, could be thin, could be fat. Um, you also have to be able to do a nice zigzag, okay? Could be bigger, could be narrow, could be like that, little tiny ones, okay? How about a curvilinear line? That's a really pretty one. Could be an S curve, C curve, right? Beep, beep, beep. If you can do those three simple things, you are off to the races. And so let us begin with today's You Draw It. And uh, this is gonna start with a nice straight line like so, okay? If you're drawing this on paper, which most of you probably are, but if you're drawing on an iPad, whatever you're doing, I want you to make this line comfortable for yourselves. About, you know, three quarters of an inch, maybe something like that. A um, little bit of room to add on to it, so don't draw too tiny, all right? Um, from here, we're going to drop down, all right? Drop down, drop down, all right? Now look at the length of these two lines. We have some symmetry going on here. Each of these are slightly shorter than that first line we drew. It's important to do comparative measuring in drawing, so let's remember that, okay? There you go. Now I want you to come back up a little ways on both of those lines, all right? What you're going to do is a little C curve, all right? And you're gonna leave some room between both of these lines because I'm gonna do another bit of symmetry action. So watch carefully, here we go. C curve, like so. And then same on that side, see that? So compare what I've got on the page to what you have, all right? And try and match it up. I'll pause there for a moment. So everybody's on the same page. Okay, we're gonna drop this down. Drop it on down like this, and drop it on down like that. Okay, so this is more symmetry action. I'll do a little bit of a better job of that there for you. How about that? There we go. Are the lines I draw perfectly straight? No, not all the time. And does it matter? No, certainly not. And that's the beautiful thing. You do not have to worry about making perfectly straight lines. Your drawing will look just fine. Ready for one of those zigzags? We're gonna do it right here at the bottom. Okay, it's gonna be like a letter V. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to curve these lines on the outside down this way. All right, now I want you to watch carefully what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop right about here. I'm gonna come down, curve right to about there. Same on this side, curve right to about there. Okay, so we go down and down again. All right, now from there, make this one a little bit closer, okay? We're gonna do a little curve, a linear line. Check it out, down and around, okay? Down and around. 
Alrighty, so far so good. Now we're heading back up here to the top of the drawing and we're gonna extend this line up and we're gonna curve it slightly. So up and slight curve. Same on this side, up and a slight curve. There's always a lot of symmetry in most of the drawings we do and that's a good thing because it's easy for you to compare left side to right side, okay? Now from here, we're just gonna drop down with a bit of a curve as well. Down with a bit of a curve. Some of you might have figured out what we're drawing, you know, based on the little joke I told up front at the top of the show, right? Alrighty. Timothy says, looking like kind of a mask, a mask of sorts. RB says, a King Tut mask. Hey, guess what? We did draw um, King Tut's mask. If you uh, go back on YouTube or Behance and search for uh, King Tut, you will find that drawing. Check it out. A little dot right here. A little dot right there. Mm-hmm. Ah, this is looking familiar. Out here to the side, remember this first line we drew? Check it out. We're going to just carry it out that way. And then, bloop. It's kind of like a potato chip from the side, right? Just like that. And then same on this side. One and two. All right. Can you all see that? How's it looking? Okay, now right here in the middle, we're gonna C curve on down, okay? Then up, tiny C curve, and back. Okay, a little tuft of hair there for you. Very nice. Okay, right about here where we start to curve. See this curve? Okay, we're going to do a little diagonal line like this and another one off to the side, like that. And now I'm going to move down, not totally vertical, okay? A little bit of an angle to it. A little bit down like this, a little bit down like that. Keep these the same length, okay? And then you're going to do a curvilinear line that has almost no curve to it, but it's, it's subtle. Check it out. Subtle curve. Subtle curve. All right, now, check this out. We're going to come up this way pretty narrow, like so, and there you go. Remember, if you're not adding sound effects while you're drawing, you're doing it wrong, okay? Make sure you add the sound effects. For some reason, it just enhances everything. So see that? Up, up, a little curve in the middle. And we're almost done, folks. This is a quick one. The draw along portion of the show that you draw it is always nice and zippy if I can manage it. Um, now, I'm going to give you a hint as to what we're going to do down here by drawing something up here. Check it out. Draw a line coming out this way, and then a couple of little lines like that, okay? Imagine that line is passing behind this curvilinear line here, and just stick it out right there, okay? Ah, and so now what we're going to do is instead of drawing the rest of the legs, we're going to do this. Out from the sides. And then we do a couple more of these and we start to throw these all around, okay? And this shows us that that goat is up to his knees in grass, okay? He's even munching on some of it right there. And folks, there's only one thing remaining. Remember this little tuft we did here? We're gonna do something similar down here. A one, a two, a three, a four. It's a little scruffy beard for our goat, okay? And that is the you draw it portion of the show. Now, for this, remember, you can always add whatever you like to make it your own, okay? It's really important to customize these drawings. Make them feel like they are yours, okay? So we'll get, you could add a little barn in the background, right? Maybe some other animals, maybe some uh, mountains, all right? Maybe a little skyscape, whatever you like, some little birdies, okay? Make it your own. Maybe you draw a little UFO above the goat uh, with a tractor beam about to suck it up into the UFO and fly away. Okay, use your imagination. Uh, but there you go. That is You Draw It. And we are moving on now to Art Vocab. We haven't done this in a little while, so let's check it out. Okay, I'm going to hide our little goat friend there for a moment. We're going to pull up this painting right here, and we're going to talk about narrative art. So... What is it? Narrative art. Well, I'm going to read you aloud here what I've written here. Narrative art is art that tells a story. Well, there you go. And you might not think that this is a category of art because a lot of art tells a story, but it is a category. Uh, much of Western art until the 20th century has been narrative, depicting stories from religion, myth, and legend, history, and literature. 
Audiences were assumed to be familiar with the stories in question. Now, if you look back in art history, you're going to see this, where a lot of the paintings, okay, pre, uh, pre-Renaissance and throughout the Renaissance were uh, referencing, especially, in, of course, Western art, the Bible, okay? So you'd see a lot of religious paintings, you'd see a lot of figures uh, from the Bible stories um, in, uh, in these paintings, okay? And drawings and sculptures, of course, as well. Um, and a lot of people were familiar with these. You also had paintings of mythological things that uh, had been told way back when through the ages. Uh, a lot of Greek mythology, a lot of Roman, Roman mythology, and so on. Then from about the 17th century on, genre painting showed scenes and narratives of everyday life. Now, if you think back to the Dutch painters, you've got people like Vermeer painting that everyday life stuff so beautifully with natural light. Um, and uh, that's really kicking off a movement that spread all throughout uh, Western Europe. In the Victorian age, narrative paintings of everyday life subject became hugely popular. Now, this is what we're looking at here, believe it or not, a painting done in the past decade by the good uh, friend of the show, Paul Reed. He is a uh, painter over there in England, absolutely phenomenal realist. Um, This is Theseus and the Minotaur, a Minotaur, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I'm going to zoom in on this. You can see he's an incredible painting. Um, As you can see, he is a realist, like I mentioned. Um, works from live models and uh, creates these phenomenal paintings retelling um, uh, mythological tales using the characters we know from these myths and uh, setting them um, beautifully in what appear to be the settings where they would take place only without all the decay and without all the ruin. Um, So really vibrant, really insane, beautiful paintings. Obviously a narrative here. He's hiding from the Minotaur, right? Um, so we're getting a sense of the story being told, but I want to call your attention to one painting from a little while back. Okay. Not too long ago here. And that is this absolutely magnificent painting by Norman Rockwell. And you want to talk about narrative. Okay. No words necessary to tell the entire story here for this painting. It's absolutely one of my favorites of all time. Got the little girl. Boy, is she happy with herself. Look at that. It's called the shiner. Okay. Which is slang for a black eye. And just look at her face. Could that be any more telling, right? She is so pleased with herself, gotten one heck of a a scuffle there with somebody. But if she's smiling, you know she definitely let that kid have it. And my guess is it was a a boy who was probably picking on her, and she was not about to take that. Probably gave him a a few good knocks to the face, and um, she got one of her own, but she is totally fine with that. I love the picture of the principal looking out there, thinking, oh, how am I going to... What am I going to do about disciplining this kid? No fighting in school, right? Probably the teacher right there who was on the playground when it happened. Um, so much going on here. The setting so perfectly rendered. Um, again, the facial expressions are just gold, right? But all the detail that Rockwell puts in his paintings are just insane. He's a heck of a painter. If you haven't ever seen a Rockwell painting in person, by the way, I highly recommend it um, if you can get to one. Uh, they are a lot more painterly than you would guess. And what I mean by that is um, you can really see the evidence of the brush strokes. Uh, there's even a bit of impasto in some of his work, and you wouldn't expect that. So um, quite the artist and quite the storyteller. Much of his work, if not all of it, was was really narrative painting. There were a few exceptions with, when he did portraits and whatnot. Uh, but for the most part, especially those Saturday evening post covers, you're looking at narrative painting at its finest. So there you go. Narrative art. That's our art vocab for the day, and I think it is now time for us, of course, to move on to the animal and activity game. This is where you in the audience can suggest to me an animal doing something funny or unexpected or strange or weird or, oh, hang on a second, gang. There's the alarm for Appreciation Station. Let's not forget that. Appreciation Station. Today, we are appreciating our good friend, Jamel. Jamel, how are you doing out there? Appreciating you today. Remember that farm we owned down in Georgia? Well, we were growing peaches and watermelons, but so was everybody else. Okay, so the competition was really stiff. I thought we might have to sell a farm. Sales were not great, but you are a horticultural genius and you put on your thinking cap and you know what you came up with? The world's first watermelon peach hybrid. And it was delicious. And sure enough, we could not uh, keep on top of demand those things were flying off the field, so to speak. And um, boy, we just couldn't grow them fast enough. Made a ton of money. Thank you for that. That was a genius idea. And um, your scientific mind really got out, uh, got us out of a, a jam, if you'll pardon the pun. The jam, by the way, was also really good. So I want to thank you 
for your uh, ingenuity and your wits and your cleverness. And uh, couldn't have done it without you, pal. Thank you so much, Jamel. We appreciate you. And now it is time for us to get back to drawing. So again, we were talking about the old animal activity game. Uh, just so you know, last week we closed out the week with a zebra drinking a Slurpee, okay? That was one of the ideas coming from uh, the audience there. So that kind of gives you an idea of the sort of silliness we get up to with this. So if you have any ideas, throw them in the chat and we're gonna see what we can draw today. Remember, keep them fun, keep them funny, keep them weird. Uh, that's what makes them good. I gotta get my nice light blue color to sketch with and there it is. So I'll be doing a nice sketch of your ideas and then I will be drawing whatever you suggest. So I'm getting myself warm here. There we go. All right, let's see what we have here today. Looking at the chat, I see Biola is suggesting an owl playing a guitar. I like that. How about a panda doing artistic swimming from RB? I see you've been watching the Olympics, RB. Joanne says, a cowboy lassoing that cow with a licorice string. <laughs> nice. Um, actually, never draw people with the animal and activity game, but I like that. Um, a moose in a hula skirt. Well, that's funny, Janet. I like that one. Boy, that's a strange one. A moose in a hula skirt. I think I'm going to do that. Um, Christelle says, a fish who doesn't want to drink in a plastic bottle. Well, I don't drink, but no, no plastic in the oceans, please, folks. Porcupine washing a car, a lion playing the banjo. These are funny. Janet says, I'm Canadian. Well, no wonder we suggest the moose. All right, let's do it. A moose in a hula skirt. Folks, thanks for all the great suggestions. Keep them coming every single time we do the show. You know I'll get to you and we'll do your drawing. Um, so let's sketch this one up. Moose in a hula skirt. So I guess I gotta have the arms kind of out to the side here doing the old hula. I'm gonna put that, that head up like that. And uh, actually, let's get those ears out like this. There we go. All of my my moose drawings wind up looking like like Bullwinkle because I don't honestly know how to draw a moose the right way sorry just being honest gonna have to give this moose a longer neck don't you think so here's the beauty of working digitally check this out I'm gonna take all this and we're gonna size it down like that and then we are going to make the neck a bit more a bit longer more pronounced there I even put some like coconut shells on the moose. That'd be funny. Put 
put some music there. Make that a bit more pronounced there in the front. All right, what do you think? How's that working out for y'all? Good. Let's see. <laughs> Good job, says Janet. All right. Um, yeah, you were gonna say that, huh, Janet? Bullwinkle. It's all. It's all I got. Bullwinkle's how I. That's my reference. My point of reference. For better, for worse, right? Um, all right, let's grab our darker blue and let's see what we can do in the few minutes uh, we have left here. So up we go and around. For that moose head. And then we're going to get that horn. Horn? What am I saying? They're called antlers, Kyle, aren't they? <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, it's hard to talk a lot when you're drawing. It's one of the things that I thought, well, surely I'll get better at that as time goes on. But I got to tell you, the concentration required to try and draw something in like two minutes um, before the show is over. Sure makes it hard for me to always construct a sentence um, that's grammatically correct or whatever. It really does. skirt, I guess. And there's the other foot. Kind of blew it on the ankle there. Let me get that out a bit more. There we go. Not that I really have an idea of what a moose's foot looks like, but you know. And then we've got these wavy lines suggesting the tunage in the background, right? Try and see if we can get that to make sense. Cool shadow there, cool shadow there, shadow, shadow. A few more lines just for texture. And let's hide that uh, sketch for a moment. A bit more texture in those uh, antlers there. Okay, 
And there you have it, folks. Moose in a hula skirt. It's always something funny. It's always something good. Um, I want to thank you all for hanging out for the Draw Along show. And uh, remember, um, we're all in this together. So like I said at the top of the show, do the right thing. Let's take care of one another. And um, I know you will. So in the meantime, please remember to uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind. I want to say thanks again for watching. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. And until then, ciao for now.